Take a deep breath in. Are you ready to settle in? Tune in to the Lord. Tune in to the God who speaks. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear my voice and they will listen to me. They will not listen to another. So we all know the voice of the good shepherd because he says, I have other sheep and I must get them too. Do you see that? Do you see that in there? Jesus is saying, you thought you weren't my sheep. I know I use this exclusive language and blah, 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 blah. I know he did that. He did that. It's strategic in nature. It is strategic in nature. And that's what we're getting to tonight. We're channeling the Lord Jesus Christ right now. Sorry about the blah, blah, blah. That was me. That was Jesus said what the Father gave him to say. Do you see that? Every word that came from the mouth of Jesus was from the Father. From the Father. It was perfect wisdom. It was perfect love. Every word was perfect wisdom and perfect love. Because Jesus channeled the Father. Jesus channeled the Father, and he said, I know his command leads to what? Eternal life. Eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, Father. Come on. Let's get right down to it. They may, they may know you, Father. My Abba, my Papa, my Papa, my Papa, my Papa, my Son, my Papa. See, you get to join the dance of this relationship of sonship. You get to dance in this relationship. Jesus gives you his relationship with his father, his perfect relationship with his father. He gives you that relationship. You get in on his relationship with the father. This is the secret of the gospel. This is the secret of the gospel. I told you you wouldn't have to wait long. Three minutes in and you've got it. You've got one of the big ones. And Daniel's wondering, Lord, where are you going with this? I, I think I put in the title too. Are you going to come up with a second one? What might it be? I thought I was going to talk about something else, but here you are saying your thing. This is more important. This is so beautiful. This is wonderful. This is oneness. I and my father are one. Oh, Hai Shin Metelong. So are you going to hang with me or what? Are you as a listener going to put up with me for a little while? Are you going to... spend time with me to perhaps even explore a second most amazing what was the first i think we almost forgot it already didn't we we're such forgetful hearers see mary treasured these things in her heart she marinated on the word that came from the mouth of god she treasured them. She held them dear. Without question, she would die for Jesus. My son. My son. 
Do you think you could tear Mary away from the cross? And her name, what does her name mean? Think about that. Let's Google it. What does her name mean? What does the name Mary mean? Mary, definition. Definition. As if we could define and confine anybody. Do you understand? This is an aspect of, it's not the whole thing. The whole thing is the whole thing. I mean, we're talking about the great all. We're talking about every name that could be named, the name above all names, the name above all names. So it's above all names. It's above naming. It's the name above all names. So what does the scripture say? A new name? A new name. A new name. A new name. A new name. It's always new with the one who is mystery. It's always new with the one who is mystery. It's always new with the one who is mystery. So I'm inviting you all, all of my dearest friends, thank you for joining me this evening. I'm inviting all my dearest friends to consider this one. You too can know him. This is what eternal life is, to know him to know Father, to know Jesus Christ, whom he has sent, to know Yeshua HaMashiach. So we will learn perhaps something about Mary. What are we going to learn about Mary? What are we going to learn about Mary? Hebrew meaning, okay? Maria. Bitter, beloved, or drop of the sea. Huh. Its origins are not entirely clear. Miriam. The Hebrew name Miriam. It is believed the meaning of Miriam is drop of the sea. What can we learn about this? What can we learn? What can we learn about this? Drop of the sea. Bitter, okay, we've got that too, from the Hebrew mara, meaning bitterness. And beloved, from the Egyptian root. Myrrh. 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 Frankincense gold and myrrh, the bitterness of suffering. A sword will pierce your own soul, too, was the prophecy given to Mary. Indeed, it does. It does. I want to say it did, but it, it came out does. Indeed, it does. So I am uh, reminded of the spirit and the bride say, come, do you wish to drink? Freely of the waters of life this evening, the spirit and the bride say, Come, come, come to the waters, drink freely 
of the water of life, which becomes in you a spring of living water. A spring of living water. And this is what Daniel gives of you. Of you, of you, of you. I don't even know why it came out that way. Daniel's trying to make sense of it. All right. We're going to go close that door. I think my cat came back in. I was so happy. I thought it lost him on 4th of July with all the rain and the boom, boom, booms. I thought he was outside suffering this whole time. And then I, I, I come in here and I watch the, this blanket stir, you know, this blanket that's covering the, the piano, the keyboard. And he's in, on the chair underneath, underneath the blanket. That's his little cave. And I saw it just stir. And I'm like, oh, my cat's here. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. So I'll be right back. I'm going to close this door. I'm still intrigued by this whole drop of the sea thing. Now, I want to talk about that because I, I, I believe I have a teaching on that. I believe I have a teaching on that. Would you like to hear it? Would you like to hear it? Would you like to hear it? We're going to teach on that. A drop of the sea. If all there is, is sea, now I'm considering a scripture, there shall be no more sea. What are we talking about there? There shall be no more sea. I have no idea what that means. Okay. But we've got drop of the sea. I think Daniel and maybe perhaps all of us, I don't know, maybe maybe we're not ready for what that means. Maybe we're not ready for a teaching on and there shall be no more sea. Well, there should be no more, no more death. That's that's for sure. Uh, there should be no more C in Revelation 21. 1. First of seven things that are no more. What are the other seven things? Prophetic passages about Jesus' first coming were fulfilled, literally. Hmm. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm not, I'm not sure we should dive any further into that. We're getting back to uh, another teaching about a drop in the sea. I'm sorry I can't edit all that out of your experience that last minute and a half perhaps wow that's a long time of your life i stole i'm so sorry please forgive me okay i want to give you i want to give you what you came for i want to give you the the goods i want to give you the valuables i just want to hand them over because it's my father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom and the keys to the kingdom see these are two valuable keys of spiritual alchemy all right remember what they were numero uno let's see it in a new light let's discover it in a new way
Let's discover it right now together as if we, we, we forgot. We literally forgot what lesson number one was. What key number one of spiritual alchemy is. We forgot, and so we get to remember again. This is the joy of our experience. This is wonderful. We do this to ourselves over and over and over and over and over again. With every life that's ever birthed, we do this to ourselves, and it's a tremendous gift to us to watch our children mature into knowing and appreciating it in a new way. See, you're part of the mystery that is Christ. You're part of the mystery that is Christ, experiencing life for him and as him, for him and as him, for him and as him, just as Jesus was for Father and as Father. I and my Father are one. Oneness, 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 oneness. And that is the message we preach. That is the secret of the gospel. That is a secret of the gospel. I am telling you secrets. Shh. Tell everybody. Tell everybody. Best kept secret. You better... Tell everybody. Oneness. You are a fractal of the soul of God. You are the I am having a blah, blah, blah experience, whatever your name is. But you got to realize you're above that name. Boom. You are unconfined from any story you've ever told yourself. That's the ego. And we're moving past that. We're above that. We're above that. Ego death. Ego death. Ego death. You celebrate it. You celebrate the cross. Your ego death on a cross of Jesus Christ. Your ego death on the cross of Jesus Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. For me. See, I am one of his sheep. And you are one of his sheep, no matter who you are. See? You used to tell stories to yourself about yourself, and they're all fiction. They're all fiction. They're all lies. So what's the truth? What's the ontological truth of your beingness? What is it? What is it? I want to confront you, slippery, slimy little ego who's kicking and clawing and scrambling, trying to retain his lies, her lies, our lies. So who are you? You're a fractal of the great all. <laughs> You're an expression of the divine consciousness that God is, and he has perfectly mastered sanity. He has perfectly mastered sanity, and he offers you sanity. By recognizing his otherness and our oneness and perfect harmony his otherness and our oneness in perfect harmony. His holiness. That's what otherness is all about. He's your significant other, and he is the most glorious, the most glorious. He is the most glorious. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua HaMashiach, Yehoshua HaMashiach. 
Jesus the Anointed, Jesucristo, all these names, he's above all those names. He's above all those names. He's holy. See, he's other. He's something other than what you've ever named or could name. He's not an idol. He is above that. He is Lord. See, that's what we're getting at. Setting apart Christ as Lord in your life. This is what it means. This is what it means to honor the one that Father honors. We join Father in the worship of the Son. Yeshua HaMashiach. On a cross, the King, the King of the people of God, the King of the people of God, Jesus of Nazareth. See, he's known as a Nazarene. There's a Nazarite vow. That was something different, I think. I don't know. I don't know what this is all about. It's about holiness, though. It's about supreme otherness. He's the Nazarene. He's the Nazarite. But we've seen him drink plenty of wine. You're not supposed to touch a grape. Oh, we he, he cut his hair. Well, I don't know what the Nazarite vow is. I think Samson was a Nazarite. He didn't, he wasn't supposed to touch wine or dead people, corpses, or what? Cut his hair specifically, right? For Samson. Hmm. That's interesting. You have long hair. Long hair. The scriptures teach us, doesn't nature teach us that it's shameful for a man to have long hair? How did that end up in there? I'm like, Paul, did you mean to write that? Or did you write that? I mean, if I was to, to perhaps believe, I don't know, a conspiracy theory, what was he getting at there? We'd have to look that in context. And in the original Greek, you know what I do stand for? The reliability of the sacred texts we have received. We have a reconstructed original. Reconstructed from all various discoveries of text that got out there. Copies and 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 copies. It's every hotel room unless, you know, hotels start to make agreements that we're not going to let the Gideons in. We shut them out. I shut out the Bible. How did we ever agree to this? Bibles in hotel rooms. I don't know who that is. I don't want to channel him. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Don't want to channel you. Channel somebody nice. <sighs> See, I kind of judged him, didn't I? I judged that person who is offended, who got hurt, the wounded. We're making fun of the wounded. We're rejecting the wounded. We're cursing the wounded is that what we're doing no i don't want to do that i want to say no to that my point is i want to apologize to everyone who i apologize to everyone you know like what what is that what is that? Let me just make it real here. I was really ticked off about this whole Pride Month thing. I'm like, you guys, God resists the proud? Are you like giving God the finger? You're giving God the finger, aren't you? 
That's what you're doing with Pride Month. You're giving God the finger. So I invented Humility Month. Yep, I invented it. I did three live broadcasts celebrating Humility Month as a response video to your foolish Pride Month. It's your foolish Pride Month. It's so foolish, you guys. Let's not give God the finger. Let's not give God the finger anymore. Would you join me in just singing Kumbaya, my Lord? Kumbaya. Is this guy serious? Yes, he is. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Come by me. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, that was sucked. Sorry. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. Sing it again. Kumbaya, my Lord. Come on, join your hearts in with me. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Yes, we're getting this silly. This silly together. Isn't it amazing? Don't we love each other? Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. Kumbaya. See, heaven was pleased by our little ceremony. Heaven sees our hearts. He knows we're a bit jaded, a bit wounded ourselves. That's why we lash out at others, is because we're wounded. That's why we have pride months, is because we're wounded. We're wounded. Golly, and everybody who, who hurt you, the wounded, is wounded too. Will you forgive us? I'm speaking for both sides. I'm like, I marched in my little parade for gays and LGBTQRS, TUV, WX, Y, and Z. I marched in that parade with all my rainbow colors. I'm so gay. It's beautiful. Don't you love me? Don't judge me. See, I'm, I'm speaking for that side. I'm like, Will you forgive me? I was <laughs> I was really insensitive to you and your sensibilities and your sense of morality and the fact that you want to protect your children. And you want to keep them pure and innocent, pure like Jesus, his kind of love. I'm sorry, I got hurt. I I kind of I kind of became a little demon. I became a little demon. I became I went dark, baby. You know, yeah, I went dark. I went dark. You're thinking that I'm not identifying with this, but I am. But I am. And that's what Jesus does. And that's what he did. He identified as you. It's like, ha ha, checkmate. Checkmate, baby. I got you. I don't care if you keep fighting. I literally don't care if you keep fighting me. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. I love you. I got you. <sighs> I'm channeling Jesus. Tricked ya. You forgot I was channeling Jesus. He is sassy. He's got you. He gets you. He gets you. He knows where it all comes from. He knows the inside and out of it. He loves you. He loves you. Jesus loves you. Yeshua loves you. Yeshua loves you. Ay, ay, ay. See, I'm speaking to myself. 
Heaven loves our little ceremony tonight. This is how Daniel channels. This is his little performance for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Because I enjoyed it. It was really sexy. <sighs> See? I forgive you for offending me. I'm the father now of three little children that I want to protect from the, the damage you're causing by your pain. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I love you too. I love you too. I'm sorry. I'm hugging you right now. I'm hugging you. I'm owning Jesus' heart for you. I'm owning Father's heart for you, his precious son, his precious daughter, his precious transgender. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Hmm. When I receive my healing, when I let you in, when I, when I embrace you, when I embrace you, my healing begins. Oh, ouch. I was the older brother and I'm sorry. I was the older brother. The prodigal was coming home and I threw a pity party and went stomped out of the room. I couldn't let you know that everyone was happy with your return. We... We're bitter. We are bitter, and we took it out on you. We did. We did. We took it out on you, and we continue to take it out on you. Because we have to say no to ungodliness. We have to hold the line. We're your warriors of light, warriors of love. We say no to ungodliness and worldly lusts. We say no. We ask you to hold the line with us. Become a Jedi of the light. And you're like, well, you're insinuating that I wasn't a Jedi of the light. I'm offended. My pride is offended. I don't like being talked down to. Treat me as an equal. Okay. Here's what I want to say to you. Yes, you're an equal, but not every idea is equal that we have. We are equals among equals, but not every idea that we present is equal in merit and in truth and in honor to the Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of his name, being conformed to his image, becoming like him in every way, loving like him, acting like him, being pure like him. See? See? Come on, guys. You know this is true. You know I've been telling you the truth. You know I've been telling you the truth. And you're trying to find ways to reject it, trying to find ways to compartmentalize me. You're doing a pretty darn good job. Bravo. 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 You are doing such a well fine job of shutting Daniel and his message out of your heart. Good job. Congratulations. We applaud you. You're, you're fighting like mad, but we already said checkmate. You want to play it out and reveal your ignorance that you didn't see it too. You want to display your ignorance for the world by not submitting to my checkmate. Do you wish to display your ignorance before all of the cosmos and be proud about it? Go right ahead. Bravo. Good job. Good job. Bravo. Bravo, David Lutz. <laughs> I love you, man. 
Love you, man. You're so awesome. David Lutz. You're like my bestie or besties. Okay, bravo. Daniel must be stopped. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <sighs> On a more serious note, that's what they said about Jesus. Jesus must be stopped. Jesus must be stopped. He must be silenced. He's saying the emperor has no clothes on, damn it. And we're the ones that have been strutting around naked, displaying our ignorance before the whole world. For so long, we have a rich tradition here that we must uphold. How dare he mock us to our faces in front of everyone. How dare he mock us to our faces in front of everyone? Do you know how much he shamed us? You shame yourselves, he would say. You shame yourselves, guys. You shame yourselves. You're the ones parading your ignorance before the world. By not humbly submitting yourselves to the Lord. Why haven't you done so? Are you holding out? You're holding out on him. He bought and paid for you. You belong to him. So give yourself to him. Give yourself to him. It's marvelous. Daniel did it. And look how fun he's having. Look at the fun he's having. He is like floating on cloud nine all the time. He loves life. He loves it. He loves life. He loves his friends. He loves his wife and his children. He loves, he loves, he loves everyone he comes into contact with. He loves people. Because he is my appointed vessel to do so. He is my appointed vessel to do so. And how dare you say that he isn't? Cheers. Full disclosure, I uh, cheated on the wine. I was supposed to take 40 days off and I broke my word. It's not something I'm proud that I have done and do. I, I've done that. I've broken my word. Why give your word if you're going to break it? Why? Because you want to end the fight. Yeah. So you give your word, and then you break your word. You ever done that? I had this friend, I went over to his house, and... Uh, his wife was out of town with her parents and uh, he's got the apartment to himself. He invites two guys over me and my friend to, to drink. I mean, he didn't, he didn't actually drink. He's like, I want to be responsible. I'm not going to drink anything. So he didn't, he didn't drink. He drank tea and ate popcorn, you know? And uh, my other friend, he finished off, he'd finished off the Jack Daniels bottle and he's going after a, a bottle of wine now. Pours me a glass, and you know what? I'm like, I'm so tired. I feel like I have nothing to give. And I want to give something to my friend. I want to give something to my friend. And I can only do it with little jamba juice. Thank you, Lord, for the jamba juice. It's so delicious. You know? And I, and I use it like a... Oh, thank you. You gave me permission to let my guard down and my all my defenses. My fortress swaddles are down. I'm defenseless before you. I'm showing you my true heart. I'm showing you my true heart. It's for you, not against you. I love you with Jesus' love. 
It's a pure love. It's eternal love. It's eternal love. It's eternal love. And this is who Daniel wants to channel, someone like this who will tell you the truth in most beautiful fashion, who will romance your ears with a little accent and the truth dripping from every syllable. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Receive it. Believe it. Learn to fly, young Padawan. Learn to use the Force. Partner with the Force. It's you. It's all you. It's all you. See beyond yourself. You're, you're bigger than that. This is Padawan basic training. You're bigger than that. That story you tell yourself about you, who you are, you don't even know who you are. You don't even know who you are. It's all right. I'm, we're here. We're here to help you. We're here to show you the way. We're here, Jedi from the ether, to mentor you. To mentor you. To lead you along life's journey along the way, along the way, and you must know his name. It's love. His name is love, eternal love. It's like a kitten. You can't define it. You can't, you can't break it apart. You have a dead kitten on your hands and kittens are full of life. You see, Jesus is full of life. He's not, he's not in a dead name. He's a living being and he lives in you. He lives in you. Got to get the accent in there. He lives in ya. <laughs> oh, no, that was the wrong, wrong region. <laughs> I think I messed up my accent. He lives in you. The Christ lives in you. There's the yeah. There it is. I, I said it right. Maybe that's more Scottish. What do you th what do you think? Daniel drinks the jamba juice in honor and glory to the Lord Jesus. He loves the Lord Jesus, he does. He surrenders and submits to Jesus all the time. He lives out of him. He lives in love. He lives in heaven. He lives in heaven. It's here and now. It's here and now. It always has been. It always will be. It's here and now. And you'll learn, you'll grow into your Padawan Jedi training and all that jazz, but you're perfectly loved now. We don't need your fullest expression to love you at this stage, you see. And it's loving you at this stage that gets you anywhere. Love yourself because you are loved. How do you love yourself? Well, you love others. You get addicted to other center self-giving love. You give of yourself. You give of yourself. You give like Jesus modeled giving. You give and you give and you give. And you give. And to those who give, much shall be given, and you shall have an abundance overflowing, overflowing, overflowing. And I want to say, with new wine. See, with newness, a new name, a new wine, a new name, a name above all names, 
mystery, mystery, mystery. So you are a mystic when you encounter these alchemic truths. Do you want to be a holy wizard or not? I'm telling you. I'm asking you the question, do you want to be a holy wizard? Leave me a comment, I'll train you in the holy wizardly ways. <laughs> I have a new wine bag, he says. A new wine bag? Did it come in a box? Because this wine did. This is um, some lovely... I have no idea what I'm drinking. I forgot to look. It's not a Cabernet this time. It's a, it's a lovely dry wine, though. I only drink dry wines. I'm a snob like that. I like my wine to be rich and full and finished. Like the gospel. The gospel is rich and full and finished. It is finished. El finito. It is finished. Thank you, David Lutz. This little cat in a box. It's amazing. Thank you for that lovely imagery you're sharing with me in the chat here. This is going down in history, David Lutz. You are now famous on the Awakening with Daniel Levitt show. How do you feel? There'll be like millions of people watching all the backlogs of Daniel Lovett once he goes viral. And you, David Lutz, your name is famous in all the world. Pleased to be here. All right. <laughs> Oh, I can be such a snob. I can be such a like, oh, I looked at my nose at you. You annoy me. You gay people. You know, see that judgment, right? I'm like, I don't want to be that prick, okay, guys? I don't. I don't. I, I love you. If we were in a room together, I'd hug you. I'd hold you until you stopped sobbing. I'd be your friend. Do you see that? I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. I'll be your friend. I love you. 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 I'm channel father's heart for you. I love you, my son. I love you, my son. I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. 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 How is Daniel able to channel so easily? Because he's fully surrendered. It takes a little medication. No, not really medication, but you know, I bet you the disciples and Jesus had lots of good times with wine. Are you kidding me? The wine was flowing wherever Jesus went. He was known as a wine bibber. He loved the vino. Te amo vino. Te amo vino. Te amo vino. Why? So we're healing her. See, we're honoring her. We're honoring her. Yo quiero vino. Yo quiero vino. <laughs> I want wine. I want you wine. I love you wine. Mwah, 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 mwah. We're honoring wine. Isn't that different? Isn't that nice? Instead of shaming? Instead of heaping shame? Shame on you. Drinking wine? Shame on you. No. I say no. That is ungodly thinking. I'm saying that's ungodly thinking. 
I'm saying no to ungodliness. That is not godlike because my Jesus would not do that. My Jesus says, drink el vino. Okay, I will drink el vino. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, the Bible, okay, the Bible says it's okay to get buzzed, David Lutz says. Thank you for that comment. I love you, David. <laughs> You're my brother, and I'm your friend. And I'll tell you this much. Solomon writes about mixed wine. Ooh, what's he talking about? What's Solomon talking about mixed wine? Hmm? Huh? What? God's involved here with the mixed wine? God is involved here with the mixed wine. What's going on? What? How could he be involved with things that he planted on this planet for us? The vine and the ealing herbs of the earth. Does he intend us to mix them? What is going on here? I'm so confused. Like, well, you know, uh, for generations, people did that without shame. Without a shame on you by an older brother who we, we forgive. Who we forgive because you were wrong, older brother. Religious older brother. For doing that, you were wrong for shaming anyone. It's not the answer. It's not the way of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ does not shame anyone. He does not say shame on you. Shame on you. He doesn't say that. He's not a tyrant. He is not a beast. He loves. And we know what love is because he showed us what love is and what love does. And I receive it. I'm going to receive the Father forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm going to receive that forgiveness. I'm going to recognize in humility I needed him to die for me, to show me what love is. I needed him to go all the way. You just can't half-ass it with love. You had to show me with crown of thorns and uh, whipping with the cat of nine tails as rips the flesh off your back and your belly. Like passion of the Christ kind of suffering. I needed to see that. Because I'm the beast here. I needed to see that. Do you really love me? Is there someone who really loves me? Jesus does. It seems like he loves me. Look what he went through to show his love for me. Look what he went through. A crown of thorns, getting smacked on the head with sticks punched in the face. Beard torn out. Beard torn out. I mean, come on, guys. Don't touch my beard, you know. But they touched his beard, all right. And they ripped it out. It'll never grow again, even if he was pardoned. Here, behold the man. Do you want Barabbas or you want this one? Barabbas! Oh, I thought you were going to say Jesus and I'd let him go, but he'd be beardless for the rest of his life. Are you kidding me? Beardless? I mean, this is the biggest shame of all here that we heaped upon the, the Christ. We ripped out his beard. Ah, going a little heavy on the beard tonight. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, that was important, okay? Beards are important, as you can see. Mm. Muy bonito beard. Muy bonito. Mm. Disfruta mi beard. I enjoy it. Disfruto. Yo disfruto mi beard. I enjoy it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, it's so fuzzy. Just pet my face all day long. I love my beard so much. See, this is what they tore out of Jesus. Bloody, bloody splotch. There's like 
white, you know, that white pussy thing that just, you know, he's got a fat lip, so he can't talk really straight, you know. We needed to see that. And like, oh, what an ugly gash. Ooh, that is disgusting. You look just revolting. Like no one would ever love you if you if you were Seth Free, because you'd be the Mr. Ugly. I mean, you weren't even good looking to begin with. And then, but you're gonna be like Mr. Ugly after that. Anyway, okay, enough with the beard thing. I've done uh, I've, I've done kind of stretch that beard thing out a little bit too long. But you you get you feel me, right? You you feel me? Uh me gusta. Mm -hmm. I love my beard. I'm passing the kisses on to my beard. Uh, you know, we love our beards, right? Jesus loved his beard. He was, had a close relationship with that facial hair. And they tore it out. Biggest offense in all of the universe's history. Are you kidding me? They touched the beard. I don't know if you get it yet. Do we have to go over it one more time? <sighs> and that was the same thing, but different for you this evening, because that's all we ever got for you. The same thing, but different. Hmm. We're a mystery. We're keeping it different. We're uh, kind of being different tonight, aren't we? So you can trust this guy who got his beard ripped out, is what I'm saying. He let him do it. He could have called on a myriad of angels to prevent them. They'd be like, not the beard. And like angels just like. Oh, it's going to take a whole lot more of you to get to his beard because I'm defending his beard with my life. Got it. All right. He could have done. He could have called on that. He could have saved his beard. But no, he's like, I give you my, my beard. I give you my beard. Oh, my beard. I love my beard. I love my beard. I love my beard. But I give you my beard. Oh! Oh! It's a big deal. Jesus gives you his beard. You can trust a man who gives you his beard is what I'm getting at. Establishing trust with the with a man who would give you his beard, that's real love. You know you're loved. Nothing can touch that love. You have the utmost confidence in him. Beard love. Are you kidding me? That's beard love, bro. See, now, now you're all saved. You trust the Lord Jesus. You're all saved. My work here is done. Because of beard love. Namaste. Namaste. And that was the second lesson, beard love. You could trust beard love. Second key of uh, spiritual alchemy. It's beard love. Beard love, not beer love. We love the beer too, but don't get me wrong. We're talking about beards. This 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 beard caught a lot of beer over the years. There's there's still yep, there's a little beer there. We're talking about beard love, bro. And sis. All right. Peace out, my homies. Illumination all day long. We're in heaven. Don't you doubt it. Don't you doubt it. Are you doubting me? I only got like nine seconds to convince you. Jesus said it, okay? That's good enough for me. Bye, y'all.